In today's episode, we will be discussing some calls we've run in Parker County. All protected health information has been removed. Any pertinent details that could be used to identify the case have also been removed or changed. All right. Hey guys, welcome to the PCHD EMS podcast. My name is Jeff. I'm a supervisor here at Parker County. We are going to be going over hyperkalemia today and uh, just a couple of the calls that we've run in the last couple of months, a couple of the sicker patients that we've had. Uh, this is a call that we actually, um, I feel like I didn't see a lot of it. Maybe I just didn't recognize it over the last, I don't know, five years of my career. But then all of a sudden, like we start getting education about it. Either it starts happening or we just start recognizing it. Um, so we're going to start with you, Art, and your call. Uh, let's just jump right into it. What did you get dispatched to? What'd you see? What you got? Okay. I don't remember the exact nature of the call. It might've been like shortness of breath. So on that particular day, I was working 820 up in Springtown. So I kind of was out and about already. I had the jump on the call. So I went ahead, just wrapped the response vehicle. I arrived probably a good five minutes before um, the other EMS unit 21 or 22 Fire was on scene, kind of walk in, you know, 60-ish year old female, just kind of on the bed, uh, just has a BiPAP on, not really responsive, you know, saying a whole lot. Uh, husband was there, so he was kind of the best historian that I had at the time, but just start doing, you know, quick set of vitals and asking him what's kind of going on. And kind of throughout that process, the ambulance uh, crew showed up, Marita and Brooke, and we start going more extensive. So Marita, she's actually leading. She's talking to the husband. But kind of getting to the nitty and gritty, uh, we see her heart rate's low. We see we do a 12 lead, and we just kind of see the wide complex. We see the peak two waves, and that kind of alerts us. So base set of vital signs, what did you get? Um, we can actually look right here. Um, so about 130 over 90. Heart rate was, was bradycardic, you know, so you have about 40s or 50s. O2 sat was on room air, you know, between 95 and 100, you know, um, respiratory rate was about 20. Um, but the thing is just with getting history and whatnot, you know, she was on a beta blocker. So we have all these questions, right? we have all these questions like, you know, did she take too much of her metoprolol? Is that why her heart rate's low? Like what's the deal, right? So kind of what was conveyed to us through the husband was she's been circling the drain for the past couple of days. And immediately we're like, well, what does that mean? You know, <laughs> kind of go into detail because, yeah. you know, what kind of historian are they, right? How much information are they going to give you? So he mentioned uh, in his history for the patient that she had hypocalcemia, but they were overloading her with all this potassium. It was like 10 you know, capsules in the morning, 10 capsules at lunchtime, and 10 capsules at so night. They, they, hang on, they were treating hypocalcemia? With potassium. That's interesting. Okay. Right. So <laughs> I'm, I'm like, there's no way that this is, is possible, right? Like, this yeah. doesn't make any yeah. sense, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, so we have questions like, well, why is this happening? Yeah. Yeah. So right then and there, I mean, everything kind of made sense. You know, the EKG, the presentation, she was a little altered, you know, GCS about a 14, what we would categorize as a 14. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at. So okay, so get her in the in, in the ambulance. I'm assuming pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, what treatments did you guys do, and and what response did you see? So just what was that last part? I'm sorry. Uh, what what response did you get from the patient? Like did did she get any better? Like we kind of talked about hyper K. Everybody kind of agreed um, that that was probably the best route to go as far as the treatment goes. You know, as far as you know, giving bicarb, giving calcium, and whatnot. Um, you know, she had some nausea, so we gave some Zofran as well, but we get her in the truck. Um, we get her situated, you know, when we say let's do everything, you know, that's, that's 12 lead, uh, you know, again and again, you know, every, you know, five, 10 minutes to assess changes, you know, bilateral IVs, we're doing blood sugar, et cetera, right. Getting them prepped, you know, uh, put her on some supplemental oxygen. So we get going to the hospital. Um, I believe we went code but I'm not too sure. Um, we probably went code. Yeah, you yeah, were there at the yeah. receiving hospital, so yeah. so you saw the lights, you yeah. know. Sometimes we, we, we're kind of immune to all that. Yeah. But um, we did, we gave her uh, bicarb, we gave her calcium, and right after that treatment, we started to see like the heart rate go up. We started to see kind of a little bit of changes, um, but it was very short-lived very short-lived really and truly like right at that 10 minute mark when we were able to like redose everything 
it's almost like she was ready <laughs> for yeah. that second dose. So we went ahead and provided those same treatments. And the same thing, like you could see the heart rate go up and you would see very subtle changes on the EKG. And I don't know as far as what happened when we transferred care. Yeah. If So I, I believe I, I followed up or, or Rita uh, informed me after the call that you guys had a, that the patient had a K of like 8.4. It was in the, it was in the mid eights. And yeah. uh, I think she probably got more calcium. Do you know? I mean. Uh, at the hospital, uh, as far as just looking over everything she did, she okay. received more calcium and they uh, stabilized her. They reduced hopefully, it. <laughs> hopefully they adjusted the uh, prescription of potassium that she was on. Yeah. I'm assuming that she didn't go home on, on an absolute insane amount of potassium. Yeah, this patient ended up getting admitted for about three or four days, I believe, and was discharged uh, home self-care. But hopefully, yes, yeah. <laughs> hopefully everything was changed and they're not under that same potassium regimen. So. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of potassium. Yeah. Um, so recognition, I mean, you had, you had pill bottles there. Like, I feel like we almost never have pill bottles there. That's just like, Hey, uh, in case you're wondering what's going on, here's a pill bottle, uh, to tell you exactly what's going on. Yeah. So, so that, that was a pretty, it made it easier, I yeah. guess, because, you know, if we don't have a husband there to kind of inform us or somebody there, um, Versus just a bystander that's like, oh, hey, um, I found the patient like this. Yeah. You really have uh, mm -hmm. a lot less to use, a lot more uh, uh, data, I guess. Um, so you remove the husband, you remove the pill bottles, then you have to make that decision like, hey, guys, I think this is hyper K. Like, listen to your vitals, like, listen to what you have in front of you, like your EKG. I mean, would you guys have caught it if it wasn't for the pill bottles and the husband? Good question. Good yeah. question. I don't remember at what point. If we took the 12 lead and I'm like, man, that's really wide. Because yeah. I remember looking at... Uh, do you have the 12 lead in front of you? I do not. Okay. So, But I remember looking at the monitor and I was like, ah, that looks really wide. Yeah. But I didn't have the print off yet. Okay. But it was at the same time the information was being kind of given. So I don't know. That's a great question. Like, would I or would we have caught it or yeah. been more inclined to be like, oh, hyper K, mm -hmm. you know, if those pill bottles weren't there? I don't know. It's yeah. a good question. Uh that's, that's, that question is kind of what I asked myself because I, I was a second responding unit on Ash's call. And by the time I got there, he had already, he had already, you know, recognized that the patient was in hyperkalemia and he was, he was well on his way of down the, down the mental pathway of, of what we needed to do. I don't think I would have caught it just based on, I mean, this is, you know, this is what he had. Uh, well, I guess this is actually the last EKG that he had, but I mean, it's, you know, it's wide. It, if you're thinking about hyperkalemia, you're like, oh, yeah, that's hyperkalemia. But, I mean, altered mental status, you know, you're thinking possible sepsis. You're thinking, you know, so many other things. I, I don't know. Hyperkalemia is, is beginning to get up there on my, on my list of suspicions. Yeah, but, I'm looking for it all the time, um, yeah. I feel like now. Now, like, now, it's, now it's up there in our differential diagnosis list. But, I mean, before, I'm not sure that I'm not sure that I would have caught it. So, yeah. Um, well, any, any pearls from, from that one, uh, from that call, anything that you wish you could have done differently or, uh, done quicker or do you feel like it, the call went about as good as it could have? I think the call went about as good as it could have, honestly. I mean, we, we just had all the right information just kind yeah. of thrown out there in our lap. If I'm, if I'm looking back on this and I didn't go hyper K, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm reviewing this chart, I'll be like, man, you know, like I kind of messed up. Yeah. <laughs> like this is why PT waves like, you know, potassium. But, you know, everybody being there and the knowledge that everybody has and brings to the table and what we teach clinically, man, we, it was handed to us on a silver platter. It was like, man... I mean, it doesn't get better than that, yeah. you know? So I really think, um, I really have nothing <laughs> other than I, I believe that we did what we we're supposed to do. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so Ash, uh, your patient actually ended up having a lower potassium level by the time we got to the hospital, but had other issues. Yeah. Um, yeah they were. so <clears throat> ended up being a little bit sicker than that, uh, ended up needing to be, you know, have an, have an airway uh, yeah. placed yeah. in the field. So walk me through your call and kind of what you saw. And mm. So we responded to a diabetic emergency. It said they had high blood sugar. Uh, we arrive on scene, find them laying unresponsive on the ground, uh, check blood sugar immediately, and it's reading high. And so we're like, okay, that makes sense. But 
his body was cold. It felt cool, really cool to the touch. It's like if you're DKA or whatever, you should feel more warm and everything. And couldn't get radial pulses, put him on the monitor. Um, and then it had like wide complex. And, you know, oxygen saturation was like 67%. That's not um, good. Yeah. And blood pressure initial, first one we got was 54 over 30. Okay. So he was pretty out of it. And then uh, just looking at the EKG, it was like, this is a wide, like, kind of diffuse, bizarre complex. And, like, I was thinking, he's at, he's so far down this that he's like renal failure. He's everything shutting down. It's, he's at a very bad point. And he's breathing uh, shallow, but at a higher rate. Yeah. And uh, his initial end title was nine. So uh, he'd been there that's, for a while. That's low. Yeah, so so I got yeah. there when yeah. you were when you were like getting ready to, um, you know, I, I think I was basically lift help at that point. Uh, but so I, was, I was excited about what was going on. Yeah, you know, like so I remember. Interesting. Um, I think I was on another call and actually, like you, you were like, "Hey, uh, probably use your help on this one." So I was like, "Oh, cool." Uh, you already knew that it was hyperkalemia um, based on, I guess, just the EKG. Um, just this wide, yeah, kind of ugly looking rhythm. Yeah. Thinking um, how he was presenting again, I like, thought he like got there. Yeah, yeah, so from what I saw, from what we were talking about when I, when I got on scene, you know, we basically said, hey, this guy needs an airway, but there's about 30 minutes of things we need to do before <laughs> yes. we actually get to that point because he's, you know, he's unstable as heck. Like, yeah. he, he can't really, like, he's extremely unstable. And if we, if we, intubate him right now if we push drugs he's gonna code yep and i fully believe that he would have had we done that so yeah we got him in the back of the ambulance um got some access and started bolusing fluid uh so walk me through the pressors what you get what you gave what we gave before intubation and where we had his vital signs before pushing ketamine and I believe we used ketamine and rock, right? Yes. Um, so with the pressors, we started with push dose epi, um, and then we did the calcium, and then we did more push dose epi, uh, put him on an epi drip, and then and that was initially at eight. Jeez. And then uh, things started stabilizing. He was improving with everything that we were doing, because like initial heart rate was like in the 60s, I think it went up to the 70s, 80s. Um, pressure was improving. Oxygen was improving too, because again, he was initially satting like 67%. And then we had him with O2 bagging him uh, at the same rate he was breathing uh, to try to just, since it decay, you know, and all that, keep it at the same rate. And uh, he went up to 100% sats with that. So everything was just improving as we were going down this. He, if I remember right, he had aspirated before we got there, right? He seemed like, like, yeah, the, that was probably was, a good he possibility. Hypoxic. He was, I, I want to say he had wrong guy and stuff like that. I don't remember. Yeah, I just know like his peripheral circulation was really bad. So, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't doing much. Yeah. Did I have to get the IV for you on that one? Oh, maybe. Yeah. Was, yeah. A, uh, was it bigger than a 22? I don't know. I don't remember. It flowed really 21.5. Well. Somebody, somebody will get the IV. Flowed like yeah. a 21. There yeah. you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we ended up getting, I think, bilateral smaller gauge IVs on this guy I think. Uh, looks like we've got 220 gauges yeah, there we go that, that'll, that'll work um, so not too bad what'd you what'd we use to innovate uh, um, ketamine and rock what dose uh, I mean one make per keg uh, we okay. did so we were able to so I, that's why I was trying to remember we were able to stabilize him enough where we didn't have to half dose or like no 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 he got anything. like everything just kept improving as we were treating him like this and that's what like functioning on that, like I guess metabolic, you know, portion of it, and like got us there. We use pneumatic driven ventilators, and we put a uh, ash hooked up a albuterol treatment to the ventilator, and we actually administered albuterol on the way to the hospital as well as a second calcium um, infusion. So we, for a total of two grams of calcium mm -hmm. gluconate, he got five milligrams, I believe, of albuterol. Then our mm -hmm. protocols: bicarb, calcium. Albuterol, not necessarily in that order. Calcium, I think, is the actual um, what first line treatment. I guess you would say yeah. calcium and fluid, probably. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, we. May, I, f I feel like you made this call look easy on paper. 
I mean, I guess the, I guess twenty seven. It's, it's the great versions. charts are right. Yeah, yeah. It's the great <laughs> charts. Right. Uh, yeah. It was it was a good call. Like it was. If if I remember right, what made this call feel easy, it didn't feel easy, but you know what I'm saying. Like it felt very under control. Is because we were not in a hurry. Nope. We knew we had to RSI this guy, and we knew we weren't going anywhere quickly. Yeah. Because. I mean, we've all heard the, you know, the, the horror stories and the cautionary tales of, you know, intubating a DKA patient. Yeah. Uh, we knew where he was at on the pH scale. Uh, we didn't know, but we knew, you know. Yeah. Um, and taking, I think taking our time is, is why the guy had a good outcome. Uh, I think the, probably the hardest part of hyper-K is honestly probably recognizing it. Because it seems like from your call on somebody who had a K of 8-something... And on Ash's call, somebody who was in the, the mid sevens, um, was it 7.1? 7 7.9. 7 I think. I don't remember. That was after a couple of calciums and albuterol, so who knows yeah. what it was before, too. So, uh, basically, two severe hyper K patients. Um, calcium worked on both of them. Calcium mm -hmm. really did help. But for me, I mean, I, I wasn't on your call, Art, and I. On Ash's call, it was literally handed to me and was like, hey, do you think this is hyper-K? Both times, I don't know if I would have recognized it without the giant sign right in front of me that said, hey, you know, this is this is hyperkalemia. That's why it helps so, with, like, reading. Like, I know we'd been talking about hyper-K. I know I talked with, like, Mindy and Garrett and Smiley and all them, too, about it. And then we go and we see it, like, hey, that's yeah. what it is, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I think, I think you made that comment in the beginning. You said, like, over the years, you may have missed a lot of hyper-K. Like, yeah. I mean, same I, thing with me. Like, like yeah. why are we starting to recognize it now? Like, is there a reason? Is it because of, like, the protocols we actually, you know, the use that we have, the drugs that we carry? Yeah. Or, I mean, maybe it's just because we're, we're more educated than we were when we were baby medics. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Definitely yeah. more, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I, I feel like I, uh, I don't know, I feel like I've seen... Probably more hypercade this year than I've seen in my entire career, almost. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, I guess I'm just not, I haven't been recognizing it, but um, it, it, they're, they're sick and they they don't need, they don't need you to get aggressive with the airway until you've stabilized them. They don't need, I mean, they need calcium and mm -hmm. they need dialysis probably. You know, it would help to answer your question. You were like, you know, if I didn't have everything laid out in front of me, kind of like those pill bottles, mm -hmm. well, you know, what is it like the chemates or yeah. what? The eye stats? Like, that's going to help, yeah. you know? Yeah. That'll so be, we're, uh, that'll be we're awesome. Hopefully going to be getting those within the next yeah. within the next year, hopefully before that. Yeah. Uh, sooner rather than later, because that would be amazing to just be like, hey, what's, what's, their, what's their chemate at? Oh. Super cool. Yeah. That'd yeah. be awesome. So yeah. it's cool. when you're learning more and you get to use more tools like that, like a lot of fun stuff. But Absolutely. It's nice to be able to like get there and like figure out a patient with a lot of problems going on and be like, hey, we can get there. We just have to go through it. Um, I guess like the thing I would worry about it is just look look at the rates. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if the 130s and below, like if you see something wide, that's when talking about like, hey, if you try to push something else, you could cause a big problem. So you yeah. have to look at it. And that, it's the safe So, like, I shouldn't give a bolus of amiodarone. Yeah, you would, you know, would no, frown upon so that. That's, yeah. not, that's not what you want yeah. to do. Yeah, no. So, no, that would that, have different results. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you guys for listening and or watching. We will be putting out new episodes hopefully very soon. Y'all yeah, have a good one. No, oh, that's not, that didn't stop. Um, Y'all have a good one? I don't know. Like, now that I say it, I don't care. It's okay. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Thank you. Stay tuned. Y'all have a proper night. <laughs> <laughs> Stay healthy, y'all. This has been an episode of the PCHD EMS podcast. Thank you for joining us.